Hello everyone! Today we will be showing you how to properly install Evers Crossrail Tilt-Up System. This is our elevated system which you can install in angles from 7 to 25 degrees. If you're not already using our online design tool BASE, sign up on our website or contact the Everest Technical Sales Team to gain access to BASE. The first step is to cut the rails to the specified size that your BASE project plan states. You can also find this information on the Tilt-Up Assembly Instructions. Be sure to refer to our assembly instructions for more details and installation best practices, which you can find on the product page for the Tilt-Up system under Downloads. Please use a saw blade that is specified for aluminum. We recommend placing the rail with the open channel facing down so that the flat bottom edge is facing the saw blade. This ensures that the rail will not move while cutting. We suggest making a table of cuts to reduce the amount of rail waste. However, if you do have rail left over, you can use it toward your next cross rail project. The cross rail tilt up system consists of five essential components. You have rail cuts for the rear legs, front, and east-west rails. The L-feet with their T-bolts and nuts. The tilt-up connectors and climber sets with their respective hardware. The mid and end clamps come pre-assembled and ready to go. We offer additional components for wire management and grounding. Our end caps cover the sharp ends of the rail cuts and enhance the aesthetics of the array. Base will recommend distances between supports to withstand the winds in the area. You must mark an east-west line as well as a north-south line for every point where a leg will be installed. Where the lines intersect are where the anchor should be placed. The roof we are installing on requires a dowel for anchoring, so we are using a rotary hammer drill with a depth gauge to create the exact measurement of the dowel. Drill where the lines intersect. The anchoring method you use will depend on the type of roof. We offer various roof attachment products to support all your flat roof projects. Clean the drilling area well so that the sealant works properly. Apply the sealant inside the perforation. Be careful to coat it correctly. Do not apply it excessively. For this type of roof, we have to use an expansive anchor. Be sure to follow the instructions of the anchor manufacturer to ensure proper fastening. Tighten the screw to activate the expansive stud. Apply sealant to the bottom of the L foot. Place it on the perforation. Insert the screw and drill it into place. For now, leave it a little bit loose to allow for adjustments later. Take the rail section that corresponds to the front leg. Place it on the front L foot and hand tighten it with the T-bolt and nut. Repeat this with the rear leg. Raise the front leg and bring it closer so that it is perpendicular with the rear leg. Note that we only use one type of rail for the entire system. This will help us reduce material waste. Join the front and rear legs by using the tilt connector set. To help speed up the process, the rear leg and the tilt connector can be pre-assembled with two of the T-bolts and nuts. Note that the T-bolt has a slot on the bottom that indicates when it is properly aligned. Make sure that the line is perpendicular to the rail. With the help of a square layout tool, we can align the legs so they are 90 degrees. This first adjustment will allow us to align all the other legs easier. The component nuts must be tightened to 25.8 foot-pounds or 35 newton meters. Use a thread level gauge to ensure all the legs are level in their height. This ensures the east-west rails are level and the modules will sit properly. For systems larger than four panels, you will have to use a rail connector to extend the rails. To install the rail connector, align the rails in the same direction, then slide them into the rail connector so that the rails meet in the middle. The rail connector is structural 
meaning the two rail sections will work structurally as one. Install the T-bolts and nuts and torque them to 25.8 foot-pounds or 35 newton meters. Adjust the east-west rail so that they are 6 inches from the bottom. Note that the maximum distance from the horizontal rails to the support points is 8 inches. Insert the climber set to fix the rails into place. For greater strength, the rail should always be supported from below. Tighten the Allen screws of the climber set to 11.8 foot-pounds or 16 newton meters. Once all the rails are installed, you can insert the clamps. Gently pinch the ends of the plastic installation aid located on the bottom of the clamp. Insert the clamp into the rail just below the rib. Turn it clockwise so that it engages into the rail channel. Repeat this with all of the clamps. The clamps allow us to have both hands free while installing the modules. Adjust the modules and clamps according to the module manufacturer's guidelines. Slide the clamps to make contact with the module and torque them to 12 foot-pounds or 16 newton meters. We recommend using a torque wrench for the final tightening of all the components. Install the remainder of the modules, ensuring that the bottoms are aligned to allow for better aesthetics. If necessary, install the microinverter or optimizer using our Crossrail microinverter and optimizer mounting kit. Use our new TC wire clip to manage wires in the rail channel. Or if you prefer external wire management, you can use the Omega clip or Sunrunner cable clip. To ground the system, we require one Everest ground lug at some point in the structure to bring the copper wire to ground. Attach the end caps to protect the sharp corners of the rail and complete the system. And there you have it. We've completed a four module cross rail tilt up system in a quick and efficient manner. We hope this video will help you with your tilt up installations. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching.